Hey, people of faith, Pastor Daniel here for our Sunday sermon on Sunday, April the 14th, 2024. The title of today's sermon is See God is Here. And our scripture comes from John chapter 20, verses 24 to 31. Before we get into that, I just want to preface the sermon with this. I'm wearing this t-shirt that I referenced in last week's sermon. Last week's sermon, which handled the scripture just before this, talked about how Jesus sends us. And he says that he sends us just as the Father has sent him. And we talked about how in our society, we often feel timid about our Christianity. And I referenced this shirt that my mother bought me. Warning, I may start talking about Jesus at any moment. Our society doesn't want that. But Jesus does want that. Jesus does want us to talk about him, to have him on our mind, and to share him, his love, and his goodness with others. He wants that. And I understand if some of you feel like you're a little, well, that's, that's the pastor's job. No, it's not the pastor's job. That's the Christian's job to talk about Jesus. When people come to church, 90% of the time they decide to come to a new church or visit a new church because a person, a, a friend invited them, not because a pastor invited them. I am a, per, a person, but I may not be their friend, not because a pastor invited them to come to church. People expect pastors to invite others to church, but when a friend of theirs invites them to church, they take it a little bit more serious and they think, oh, maybe I should come to this church. So I want to throw that out there before we get into this sermon, because last week's sermon was about how Jesus sends us with a spirit of boldness, being willing to talk about faith publicly and openly. Today, this sermon is just for you. You out there who may feel a little lost. You out there who, whether you've been in the church your whole life or you used to go to church, now you don't anymore. This sermon is for you. From John Chapter 20, verses 24 to 31. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and I put my finger where the nail marks were, and I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them, and the doors were locked. Jesus still came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we give you thanks so much for your word. Your word, who is Jesus the Christ. Your word, who is the Holy Spirit, who is in our midst. We give you thanks so much, Lord, for your word that is the sharing of the faith. And we give you thanks so much for your word that is the Holy Scriptures that we've read before us. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we speak now and as we listen now, that it may all come from your word. For you, O oh Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. And we pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen and amen. Can you think back to... The, the happiest time in your life. When in your life did you smile the biggest smile you ever smiled? Are you thinking back to when you were a kid? Are you thinking back to uh, maybe your, your wedding day? You smiled the biggest smile you ever had. Maybe you're thinking back to, uh, to, maybe you're thinking back to when you had your child. Maybe you're thinking back to 
when you fell in love for the first time, when you're going on dates, you know, when you fall in love, when, when did you ever have the biggest, absolute biggest smile on your face? This past week was just a holy week for us. Summer and the girls went along with me. The Global Methodist Church, the denomination, had a conference for young clergy, clergy 40, ages 40 and under, and I'm 32, I'm still young clergy. <laughs> and they had a conference for us in Lake Junaluska, North Carolina. So Summer and the girls, they came with me and we went. It was absolutely awesome. And I got to see and hear and have personal conversations with both of our bishops in the Global Methodist Church, Bishop Scott Jones and Bishop Mark Webb. And I also uh, just got had them pray over me and my family as they prayed over all kinds of other people as well. We heard awesome sermons and messages that really just touched our heart, both Summer and I, and kind of took yet another step forward in our journey of faith. Ain't no kind of to it. We definitely did. Taking steps forward in the journey of faith, not just one step, hey, I believe, but faith is a journey, and we should all take a step forward. Well, that conference lasted from Monday to Wednesday, and then a holy thing happened. My brother came back from his time overseas for the military serving in Saudi Arabia, and he called me on that Wednesday evening. He said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, I'm sitting here at mom and dad's. We have another conference on Friday. So I'm in Spartanburg on, on Wednesday night and Thursday because Friday's conference is in Ashboro. So he said, well, if you can come to Columbia, I'll be there in about an hour and a half. He was flying from Baltimore down to uh, Fort Sumter, which is where he were, where he was, where he flew into. So I flew down and I picked him up. And he was tired. It was good to see him. It was the first time I ever picked my brother up. He's been overseas over half a dozen times. Over, yeah, half a dozen, about eight times he's been overseas. And it was good to see him. I took him to his, his house where he got to embrace his children, his three sons, and his wife. And then his wife posted a picture of him on, on Facebook. And he, my brother's not a smiler, y'all. He doesn't smile a lot. If he does, he just grins a little. He doesn't show his teeth. But he had the biggest smile on his face. Imagine that. You're a parent with young children. And you're gone for months at a time. You miss Christmas. You miss Thanksgiving. You miss New Year's. You miss their birthdays. And then you're finally back. How big of a smile would you have on your face? Are you as happy as you ever have been before? I wonder if we can think about that in our relationship to God. See, in our scripture here this morning, Thomas is kind of the lost sheep, if you will. Do you know the parable of the lost sheep? Jesus tells us the parable that a person has a hundred sheep and one goes missing and they leave the other 99 sheep behind just to find that one sheep. And when he does find the sheep, he rejoices. Jesus says, heaven rejoices greatly over one lost sinner who has come to be found. It's a great rejoicing. It's the biggest smile you've ever had in your life. And Jesus makes that happen here with Thomas. Thomas was not with the other disciples on Easter evening. When Jesus rose from the grave on that first Easter Sunday morning, on Resurrection Sunday morning, Jesus rose from the grave. And that evening, as we find in John 20, verses 19 to 23 that we read last week, Jesus appears to the disciples. Twice he says, peace be with you. He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So he gives them the Holy Spirit and he sends them out. Thomas was not there. So the other disciples say to Thomas, what we have heard for four sermons in a row now, I have seen the Lord. And this seeing here is that word. There's, remember, there's all kinds of different Greek words for the word see. And this word that is used, this horao, it's a seeing beyond just, hey, I see something with my eyes. It's a seeing beyond just, I, I, I'm starting to think about something and understand it a little. It is a seeing beyond that to the heart. It is a, man, I see this and I believe it in my heart because I've, I've thought through it. I've, I've come to believe. 
I believe this in my soul. I understand this. I understand the disciples were saying to Thomas. We understand. We believe it. We wholeheartedly know it that Jesus has risen from the grave. Poor Thomas. Thomas says, I don't believe it. And in fact, I'm not going to believe it unless I can put my finger in his hands where the nail was. Unless I can put my hand in his side where they pierced him in his side while he was on the cross. Unless I see the evidence and can touch the evidence myself, I will not believe. Then, a week after, Jesus shows up. The doors, oddly, are still closed and locked, even though he had given them the spirit of boldness. They're still a little timid. But Thomas is there this time. And if we just look at the surface of the scripture, it, it could be that Jesus only talks to Thomas. And Thomas obviously responds to Jesus. But it is as if Thomas is that lost sheep and Jesus came just for Thomas, just to talk to Thomas. He doesn't address a single one of the others. He just addresses Thomas. Here's what he says. Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. That see my hands. Talk about that in a moment. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Another translation says, do not doubt, but believe. I kind of like that. Another translation I like says, don't stop believing. That's not true. That, that's not a good translation, but it is a good journey song. Hold on to that feeling. <laughs> don't stop believing. Stop doubting. Start believing. Don't stop, stop, doubt, stop believing is actually a pretty, pretty good translation because that believe there, it's a continuous action. It's, it's called the perfect form. It's something that happened in the past. Hey, start believing now. And never stop believing. That's why we say journey. faith is a journey. Faith isn't a once and done thing. Oh, I believed in Jesus this one time. No, you believe in Jesus every day of your life. You believe in Jesus your whole life. Now, Jesus says to Thomas here, put your hand, your finger in my hand and see my hand. This is not the same word that the disciples had used, that horao, that seeing with your with their soul, that understanding and believing something with your soul, but it is a word that comes from that. It's adon, and that's a combination of the word to see with your soul, horao, and the word to know. And so the Greeks had combined that word as if it's to say, hey, here's a command, you see and you know things. And it's it's a commandment. It's it's an immediate action. In our Greek class, some, I can't believe it's been 10 years ago now since I started Greek class, we took a, a t-shirt and we put this word, the word is idu, we put it on the t-shirt because it says, it's kind of like Shazam. If you're ever, if you're a comic book fan and, and suddenly something big happens, boom, here it is. That's what Jesus is saying to Thomas. Boom, look at the hole in my hand. Here it is. You can't deny it now. It's there. Jesus uses this word a lot while he's teaching the disciples. And he says, behold, listen, I'm telling you something. You can't deny this. This is truth beyond evidence. The evidence is there to see it, but it goes even beyond that. The deeper you look into it, the more you understand it, the more you see it, the more you know. Jesus says to Thomas, listen, I'm alive. Boom. Here's the hole in my hand that you wanted to put your finger in. Hey, here's the hole in my side you wanted to put your hand in. Do not doubt, but believe and keep on believing. Don't stop believing. Thomas responds to Jesus. Thomas's response to Jesus here is the climax for this book. This is what John has been building up to all the way to this point in the gospel. And he's only got one chapter left after this. All the way the gospel story has led to this. Thomas responds, My Lord and my God. Have you ever had that moment in life in which you, you almost just can't believe something and so you laugh and, and you cry and you just get this big smile? 
I think that's what's going on with Thomas there. When I was picking my brother up from the military base, there were a lot of families who were seeing their loved ones for the first time in several months, and they just laughed, cried, smiled, embraced their loved one as much as they could, and they were like, my husband, my son, my friend is home. I am super excited. Yes! This is what God does when we really see Jesus as our Lord and our God. When Thomas here says, my Lord, my God, I imagine he is excited. I imagine he's just like, wow, Jesus, it really is you. You really are alive. I can't believe it, Jesus. Yes. And he just embraces him. We should have that response of great joy when we realize who Jesus is because we feel that our sins, even our sins have been forgiven. That weight, that burden is off our shoulders and we have this new life given to us because just as he breathed on the disciples, so too does he breathe new life into us and we rejoice greatly. We get the biggest smile on our face that we've ever had in our lives because we've been given a new life. That just as he is risen from the dead, so too does he raise us from the dead. But it only comes if we come to the same realization that Thomas did, Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my God. Jesus says to Thomas, because you have seen me, horao, the seeing with your heart, the seeing with your soul, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is interesting because I've been preaching in the sermon series about how there's different words for the word see in Greek. There are words like blip, where blepo, where you see just a little bit. There are words like theoreto, where you, you start to kind of see with your mind, you're thinking about things. There are words like horao, where you see spiritually, understanding in your heart and soul. And Jesus says, there are people who don't have to go through all that. There are people who just hear the word and believe. There are people who just never see me in the flesh. They never see the hole in my hands. Jesus says, there's no, people who've never seen the, the hole in my side. Jesus says, there are people who don't even think through everything don't have to, I should say. They probably, I, I encourage you still do it because it's good to grow in your journey of faith. But they don't have to make it all make sense like Daniel Epley does. They hear the word, Jesus says, and they believe. Those people, our Lord says, they are blessed because they receive the gospel. They receive from Jesus right into their heart without fighting without pushing back on God. And those of us who have pushed back on God, this sermon's for us. We're the Thomases. And while Jesus may have already come and put his spirit and, and everybody else in our group and our friendship, they know that he has risen. They've seen the Lord. We are still doubting. He still comes for us. Wherever you are in life, whether you've just got back and back, gotten back home from several months overseas, whether you're just now starting to get back in church for the first time in your life, several of our church members, several of you who have joined our church have told me you haven't been in church in years, some of you for five plus years, some of you for 20 plus years. Wherever you are in life, know this, Jesus came back for you. He came back for you. He came back with the biggest smile on his face because you're the lost sheep that he rejoices over. And he wants you today to say that you believe in him, that he is your Lord, that he is your God. See deep inside your heart, God is here. And he's got the biggest smile on his face because he's looking for you. And he wants you to turn to him. He wants you to believe and have eternal life in his name. Man, that makes me say thanks be to God. Amen 
and amen.